this morning, we are delighted to have Evangelist Jacob George here with us. He's working with the Wycliffe Translators. As most of you know, our church is involved in partnering with the Wycliffe in bringing about a Bible in the language, in the Mijil Mishmi language. As it has been told in the church before, the Mijil Mishmi people, they are a tribal group from Arunachal Pradesh who do not have a script, and the Wycliffe translators have been working with them, and they have come to the final phase of translating the Bible in their own language. And we thank the Lord for the privilege that God gave us as a church to stand behind it and to see it become a reality. So this morning, Evangelist Jacob George will come. He's going to present the work, the progress of the work. At the same time, he's going to bring forth the word. Shall we sit in the presence of the Lord with a prayerful attitude? May the Lord speak into our lives. India is a land of over 1.3 billion people. There are over 2,000 plus ethnic communities that live in this great land and every day over 470 languages are spoken. Language is a medium which God uses to communicate truth to his people. But the reality is that the complete Bible is only available in 75 languages and 80 languages have only the New Testament. Currently, first time Bible translation is going on in about 150 languages. There are still about 90 languages without any work of Bible translation in India. Wycliffe India's vision is to provide the word of God in the mother tongue of each people group so that the bride of Jesus may be prepared to receive him. Let their hearts hear the living word, the translation of New Testament in eight Indian languages by Wycliffe India is nearing completion. There are still many people groups that do not have a single word in their heart language. Through translation, Wycliffe India is playing a vital role in the transformation of these groups. Wycliffe India brings the translated word to the language communities in printed and non-printed form. To meet translation needs, we extend our opportunity for you to partner with Wycliffe India Bible Translation Ministry. Through your partnership, we can enable hastening the return of Jesus Christ by preparing his bride, the church, with the word of God to receive him. Your involvement through sacrificial support and prayers will help others to hear God speak in this generation. Wycliffe India encourages you to get involved through prayers and support. Wycliffe India is involved in serving the churches in India through Bible translation for more than a decade. This endeavor has been made possible by the grace of the Almighty God. The tireless efforts of the Indian Bible translators for years and with the prayers and support of numerous people of God. We request your earnest prayers and involvement in this crucial ministry. Let us work together to see the word of God being made available to each of these people groups so that the people can read and understand the powerful and the living word in their heart language. Wycliffe India is so thankful to this church and the pastor and each one of you for your partnership in making Miju Mishmi people 
getting the word of God in their Miju Mishmi people getting the word of God in their own language. You heard that eight language groups are completing their translation which will be printed and getting into the hands of those people by end of this year and early 2020. Another three languages also will be completing next year and one of them will be Miju Mishmi. We are restricting uh, the publicity regarding Miju Mishmi because there is a lot of opposition in Arunachal Pradesh. I'm not sure whether you are aware of the fact that Indian Army has moved in in large numbers into Arunachal Pradesh because of the difficult uh, situation which is prevailing there. Uh, China is claiming Arunachal Pradesh as their land. I'm not sure what is going to happen, but pray that God will give the Miju Mishpi people the word of God, that the word will be their source of strength. The complete translation is com uh, already done. Checking is going on, consultant checking is going on, and uh, our hope is that by September 2020, it will be completed testing, checking, and then typesetting, printing, and we want to give them the word of God printed by Christmas or New Year, Christmas of 2020 or New Year 2021. Pray that we will be able to take the printed material because it will be printed in the south and it, it will have it has to be transported to Arunachal Pradesh which we hope God will enable us. Thank you so much for your prayers and your support for this endeavor. We just now have completed and dedicated one New Testament in a language called Bhagdi and another seven more are on its way. All will be coming, as I said, end of this year and early next year. 12.3 million people are going to have the word of God for the first time in their own language. Pray that God will help us to do it. Word of God, once in the language, Nobody can destroy it. People have tried, but it has never happened in the history. Pray, pray, pray. As Billy Graham said, the first thing is to pray. The second thing is also to pray. And the third thing is also to pray. And if God's people will pray, God will complete his job. The very fact that I'm standing before you is that God has a plan for my life. And God has a plan for your lives too. And that's why you are here this morning in spite of this heavy rain. And um, you are able to listen what I have to share with you. How I wish I could know the beginning from the end. I know God has a wonderful plan for you and me. But many times I want to suggest to God, I have a better plan. Your plans are, it's taking so long. I have a plan which will quickly evangelize the whole world or even give the word of God to all these people, why don't you just listen to me? And God tells gently and quietly, not your will, but my will has to happen. I have been thinking of late, how God could take the business of the kingdom of God and put it in the hands of 
people like us who will bankrupt it 90% of the time. But still, why he does it the same way? Why he is giving it to your hands and my hands? Because God has no other plan. His plan is to use us. He wants to use each one of us in his kingdom business. Obedience is not cheap. Obedience is costly. And being a disciple is even costlier. We are living in a world we want everything very fast and very cheap. If possible, we would have bargained with God for our salvation, to have an easy salvation. But you know that God has to pay a high price so that he could reestablish the relationship with mankind. There is no shortcut for God's plans. One thing I want us to remember is that the call of God is on all of us. There is no exemption. It is call of God is not just for the pastor and the elders and the leaders. God's call is for all of us. And our job is to be obedient. Obedience grows from one step to the next higher step. And I can tell you for sure, obedience is full of hardship and challenges. But God is a gentleman and he does not force any one of us to obey. Jesus came into this world in total obedience to Father God. Jesus knew very well why Father sent him to this world. He knew the purpose of God. Prior to crucifixion, we all know, he, in his agonizing cry to his Father, he said, if it is possible, remove this cup from me. But in no time, he says, not my will, but let your will be done. He knew the cost of obedience. A vision birthed in 1970s, flipping through the pages of the book, Through the Gates of Splendor by Elizabeth Elliot, made a radical change in my life. And Nothing will stop me from obeying him. And that resulted we, myself and my wife, going to a tribe in Andhra Pradesh and completing the translation. Obedience depends totally on our willingness to obey. God will not force us to obey. Choice is ours. As I have explained, as you climb from the lowest step to the next step of obedience, hardships and challenges also go to the higher level. But the beauty of it all is that as we obey, our passion or our love for God to know him also increases. That's why Paul in Philippians 3, 8 to 10 says, everything is worthless when compared to the infinite value of knowing Christ. Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else as garbage. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death, so that one way or other, I will experience the power of resurrection from the dead. We all want to experience the power of 
resurrection. That's so good to know that I have the power of resurrection, but there are no shortcuts to the power of resurrection. We have to go through the suffering, even willing to die. Then only we can really experience the power of resurrection. Paul had already experienced the power of God on the way to Damascus. But he wanted to know or go deeper in knowing Christ. His desire was genuine. He was even willing to die to pursue knowing Christ. How many of us will be willing to die in the path of knowing Christ? We can take the Bible and read and understand Christ, but if we have to give our lives of knowing Christ, will we be willing to do that? Two days back, I got a message that the second Bible translator in Cameroon was also murdered by the radicals. One person, one Bible translator was killed some time back. Two days back, even a second Bible translator in Cameroon was murdered. As we know him more and more, closer to him, as we become intimate to him, our casual attitude will give way. Many times, our attitude is very casual. These are days we cannot be casual anymore. We need to know him more and more. And the path to knowing him is going through difficult times. I'm not sure whether it is right or true or not. I saw that in California, they are going to ban Bibles in the bookshops. And uh, they were asked to remove all the Bibles from all the hotel rooms. I'm not very sure about it because it was in the WhatsApp. You, don't, you can't believe it all the time. They said six of the senators together are wanting to bring a bill in California. I hope and pray that it does not happen. When you know him, you become so passionate about loving him. Is our love on the increase because we are knowing him more and more every day? We must know him more and more. We cannot be on a plateau or a same stage every day. As Christians, as believers, our love for the Lord should increase. Our passion should increase. As our passion for the Lord increases, automatically our passion for the word of God also will increase. Passion for God and passion for the word of God go together. I was so glad I was in the Malayalam service in the morning. All was talked about the word of God, the power of God. You don't have to do anything. You just read the Bible. Said The pastor said, no interpretation is needed. If you have the word of God, just read it and it will just enable you to grow in your knowledge. Can you think of a day when you don't have the Bible in your own hand? The scriptures are so encouraging. Every day, as I run to the word like the deer goes to the pleasant or cool waters, I long to read his word, meditate on it. And it gives me, even if I'm reading the same passage again and again, new thoughts. 
gives me new ideas about God and I love him more for his word. Everything for life and godliness is in the scriptures. That's what the Bible says. I have a close friend of mine. He's a very elderly person. He tells me, Jacob, I don't read the I don't even read the newspapers. I'm not telling that you should not. I don't watch the TV. I have everything I need is in the scriptures. Don't have to follow exactly like that, but I, I suppose you should read plenty enough that you will have the word of God in your heart. This gentleman is was a uh, Punjabi, studied in Canada, his uh, doctorate. He found God there and he said, I was so amazed, encouraged by the word of God. You know, he amazes me. He, he recites, you ask him anything, his answer will be a scripture. He doesn't have to even open the Bible. I wish I could be like him. I wish you will be like, be like him. Especially the younger people because when you are older it's not very easy to memorize. But keep the word of God in your heart. Nothing like using the scriptures to answer everyone. The morning you read 2 Timothy chapter 16 and 17. It says, all scripture is inspired by God and this is useful to teach us what is true and make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses his word to prepare and equip us to every good work. Let me read it from the Message Bible. It's very interesting. Word of God exposing our rebellion. Correcting our mistakes. Training us to live in God's ways. Through his word, we are put together and shaped for the task God has for us. You can note three things in this passage. In nutshell, it corrects us. It teaches us what is wrong in our lives. That is the past. It teaches us what was wrong in our lives. Past. It corrects when I am wrong. That is present. And teach me to do what is right. Future. So word of God. Past, present and future. For everything. Scripture is sufficient. What, do, what else do we need from word of God? Finally, we talked about passion for the Lord, passion for the word. Passion for the Lord and passion for the word will lead us to passion for the lost people. If we are passionate about the Lord and if we are passionate about his word, we will become passionate about the people who do not know our Father, Jesus Christ. You know, we Kerala people, I think almost all of you are from Kerala. When we see a new person and if we hear, uh, you know, they are, uh, if we understand that he is from Kerala or she is from Kerala, you know, what is the first question that we normally ask? What is it? From which place are you? Hmm? When, uh, in Kerala, the city. Or which, which is your family? Do we normally think, does this person know Christ? I don't think so. We want to know where he is from, which is his family. Can I find a way that I am related to him or her? But we need to change our knowing our own people, whether they know Christ. How in the world I can share the gospel with that person? 
for us relationship is so important for god also the relationship is so important god wants us to use us to tell them about god in romans 9 and 2 paul says my heart is filled with bitter sorrow and unending grief for my people i would be willing to die for them if that will turn them to christ this was paul's passion for his people what is our passion for our own brothers and sisters we have neighbors what is our passion for our brothers and sisters who are our neighbors we must make a way that somehow if they don't know jesus we share the gospel with them will we do everything we can do to make the jesus known to them we need to invest our resources to make jesus known this is our opportunity what will be our responses in our country there may be so many difficult situations but we need to be willing to make him known even if that means we have to give our lives i don't think god will ask all of us to give our lives but there may be selected people have to give their lives but we should always be ready to do whatever god wants us to do that is obedience obedience is costly let me close with what has happened to me recently i was fast asleep and by the middle of the night i was awakened uh, i shouldn't say i was awakened i was still in sleep it was like a dream i could hear a gentle voice asking me do you know this latest uh, phones which have uh, iphone and smartphones and all these things i said yes i know it's really nice and the voice continued saying me telling me with this phone iphone and smartphone if you just have the address you can locate anybody anywhere it will give you the map through google or uh, whatever it is you can locate and find out anywhere anybody i said that's wonderful invention using this gps on the phone i can find out anybody and anywhere anybody anywhere then i could hear again the same voice talking to me saying but there is one place no gps can lead people to and then i was silent in my sleep and the voice said nobody can lead no gps can lead another person to my presence i chose you to lead people to my presence that really shook me i woke up i started crying i said lord help me i have not led anyone recently to your presence i know your call on my life is to be a gps leading people to your presence i have been running around doing so many things for you all administration but i don't know when was the last time i led somebody to your presence god's call on all of us all, all of our lives is to be a gps to god's presence if wherever you are you can be a gps leading people to god's presence
You don't need to be a theologian. You don't need to be understanding all the scriptures. But you can, in your own little way, lead people like a GPS because all the directions are in his word given to you and you only need to just take those steps and lead people. I said, Lord, help me. I want to be your GPS. And my challenge to you this morning is be a GPS for God, each one of you, that you can lead people who do not know you, know him, lead him or her individually to the presence of God. That can be done only by you and me. He wants us to be a GPS, leading people to his presence. I'm, it's always in my mind. I know. It's not easy. As, as, I, as I told, it sounded very easy. But we have many reasons why we cannot do it. Let's give no excuses. Let's be a GPS for God. Ask God to guide you, and he will guide you. And as you heard, still people waiting to have, to know him, and to have his word, pray. Suddenly a uh, a verse of a song that came to my mind was that how long has it been since you knelt by your bed and prayed till the light has come through? Pray, pray, pray. And the Lord will complete his work as you pray and be the GPS that you need to be. Thank you so much. And we are so thankful to you for your prayers and your support. And by God's grace, hope that the Miju Mishmi people will have the word of God by December or January next year. Thank you.